who is Jesus for me, for me today? I find myself greatly helped by the work of Marcus Borg with his five descriptors of Jesus. They work for me. So first I might say Jesus is my teacher, the man full of parables that turn the world upside down, full of wisdom sayings, full of actions and great stories, also full of questions. Did you know that the Gospels contain 307 questions? Jesus is less the answer and far more the question. Secondly, Borg says that Jesus is the healer, and I would claim that for myself as well. Not strange, unexplainable, miraculous cures, but a deeper healing that comes from a discovery of forgiveness and of love and of acceptance and of that healing energy that gives me a wholeness of self. Thirdly, Jesus is for me the social prophet, the one who challenges us to work for justice and peace, to care for the marginalized and the poor, and to be inclusive and to find ourselves rooted and grounded in love. And then fourthly, and I might not have mentioned this on my own, but I was triggered by Borg, who said, Jesus is a movement and community builder, which I then hear as Jesus is the one who calls me to follow, to be a disciple, not always the best, but to do my best at following. Jesus is the one that says, always build a longer table, not bigger walls. Jesus is the one who says to all of us, love your neighbors, all of them, and do what you can to make life good and to mend the world. But it is the fifth characteristic that Borg offers that I perhaps find most intriguing. And he says in his language that Jesus is a mystic or a spirit-filled person. And I would say that for me, Jesus is someone who realizes and knows all the way through and down that he has his lives and moves and has his being in God. And he doesn't lose that. And he embodies it in his being and in his personhood. I'm reminded of some words from our former moderator, Bill Phipps, who said, Jesus holds as much of God as it is possible for a human being to hold. And I think, yes, that's, that's it. So for me, Jesus becomes a spirit-filled person or a spirit-filled expression of the holy, almost like a conduit that connects me with transforming energy so that I am in the presence of one who knows he's rooted in God and calls me into a similar journey. So the times I even find myself moving towards early orthodox statements that God became human so that humans might become divine. I don't always feel that because it feels a little arrogant, but it, it's a dream. Let me shift and go a little further because for me, Jesus is the face of God, the point of revelation. When I want to know more about who or what or how this mystery is that we name very conveniently God without necessarily giving it a full definition, I, I turn to Jesus as the face. I turn to the life, the teachings, the ministries, and yes, the death and the resurrection. I should actually say crucifixion because that gives it far more power and the resurrection. And I think of a line from the poet Sylvia Plath, who on the birth of her first child said, it is as if my fate, heart put on a face and walked into the world. And I think I'd like to take that image for what happened with Jesus and God, that in fact, the heart of God went walking into the world and was wearing the face of Jesus. And I would say that is this incredible statement of incarnation, that God in fact honors and loves the creation, the flesh. Jesus is the greatest embodiment of that in our tradition, but it points to the incarnation of God in all creation. I, I want to share one final image, one final metaphor, and that is that for me, Jesus is the lens through which we can see and be seen by God. I know that there are multiplicity of lenses at the heart of other great faiths, 
So this is an image that works with interfaith varieties, but it is the image that enlivens me. And I am able to look through the lens and to then catch a glimpse of who this God is. I'm able to say, oh, Abba, Daddy, Father. I'm able to say forgiveness and, and love. And I'm able to take a look and keep trying to sharpen the focus. And then sometimes it goes blurry and other times it's very bright. And at the same time, as I'm looking, the energy and the love and the power of God are flowing through that Jesus lens, almost like a transformer box, so that the energy comes to me and pours into my heart and allows me to then begin to work on my call, my transformation, and my work in mending and in loving the world. And it sometimes feels so strong that I'm able to pray with some confidence those words that appear in the third chapter of Ephesians, where the writer says, I pray, O Holy One, that my inner being may be strengthened by the power of your spirit, and that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith as I am being rooted and grounded in love. And may I come to know the breadth, the height, the depth, the length of the love of Christ, and to know it, get that, to know it, even though ultimately it is unknowable. So will I be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's probably where I'm going to stop. I, I could go on for much longer. Uh, Y'all know me, that the man who always has words, but that's enough. Thanks for asking. Blessings. <laughs>